If you ask someone what their favorite Windows operating system was, chances are they'll either say Windows 7 or Windows XP, and you can see why. Windows XP was a breath of fresh air from what came before, with a brand new skin named Luna, and alongside Windows 2000, it was the first operating system that truly just worked, being very stable and a great companion to your computer. While Windows Vista's launch was very poor due to the new driver implementation, heavier system requirements, and Microsoft insisting on sticking it on computers that weren't able to run it properly, by the time Windows 7 came out, all those issues were sorted. With Windows 8, Microsoft focused too much on the Metro UI and tablet-based interactions, alienating desktop users. And with Windows 10, Microsoft focused too heavily on online-based interactions, taking away the simplicity of the OS and bloating it with tracking, pointless news feeds, Cortana, etc. With Windows 7's official support already having ended, and third-party software like Steam stopping support by the end of this year, the OS is becoming less viable to use month by month. And since Windows XP support ended 7 years ago, it is now a very insecure operating system, with no modern program supporting it. But if I could tell you that you are able to revisit the golden days of Windows on a modern system without sacrificing security, driver support, or program support? No, this isn't a late April Fool's joke, although that would have been a good idea. No, this is Windows Experience, created by the user Travis, also known as Hayafumi. So without further ado, let's take a look at it. At first sight, you can't help but be impressed with how little the OS looks like Windows 10, though if you look carefully enough, you will be able to see some elements from 10 crop up. The Windows 10 system has been stripped to its bare core, similar to projects such as Tiny10 by NTDev, with heavy modifications to what has been left. If you compare it against Windows XP, you will see that not every menu and program has been ported over, with Travis instead choosing to use leftover Windows 7 elements in 10 to integrate within the skin. It's genius actually, it's like he reversed what Microsoft had done, which in turn improves the OS, since things like settings are no longer scattered around within two different programs. The second thing Travis has done is used third-party programs to bring XP features back, such as Classic Shell for the Explorer and Start menu, 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker for the Taskbar, PE Network Manager for Wi-Fi, and 3 RVX for the Volume Bar, just to name a few additions. And the final thing he did is put over XP programs like RegEdit, Paint, WordPad, and of course Pinball, although Pinball specifically has some glitches in terms of transparency. I won't show what version of Pinball this is though. I believe that all the programs in this OS are based on the professional x64 version of the OS, Therefore, this may be the 64-bit part of the game. Please check out Encommander's video on the various official parts of Pinball if you're interested, because it's a genuinely amazing video from a great channel. But anyway, you can still play K4ZMU2A's open-source decompilation of 3D Space Cadet Pinball, which also allows you to scale the game to any resolution. Admittedly, the most awesome thing that Travis had done is reskin Firefox to look like IE6. This means that for the first time in easily a decade, you can use IE6 without broken rendering or for some like me, use IE6 for the first time ever. Some of the programs included here are mainly for show, like Windows Messenger and MSN, for which Microsoft had pulled the servers a long time ago. Likewise, Windows Catalog and Windows Update are URLs that lead you to non-existent pages. But everything else works, like Windows Media Player. Pop in a CD and enjoy the mid-2000s nostalgia. And if that doesn't hit the spot, how about trying out Winamp? Love revisiting this visualizer, it was my favorite as a kid. How about the Windows XP tool with that awesome music? Still works here. But yeah, some things like here are only for show, like the address book, that seems to be ported over from Windows Vista, but doesn't have any working code left in the OS. Or the briefcase, that just creates a regular folder with a different icon. Speaking of which, the image rest and shell 32 DLLs have been ported from Windows XP, so all the retro icons are here. But of course, you aren't limited to running old school programs, as this is Windows 10, all the modern programs work like Steam, and the old NCIS installers look right at home here too. But even retro software looks right at home, like Office 2003, which I used to write the script. I am unsure about Windows 16 compatibility though, but it doesn't seem to be here. In terms of changing appearance, you have seven Luna styles to choose from, including the classic olive green and silver theme, as well as some of the downloadable ones like Zoom and the ones from the embedded version of Windows. Furthermore, these also change the look of programs, such as Office 2003, so obviously the theme is more than just a Windows blinds theme. In fact, the desktop window manager has been disabled completely here. For a brief explanation, WDM was used in Windows Vista and 7 for drawing arrow, and for Windows 8 for the start screen and the lock screen. This is why Windows 10 and 11 are so difficult in terms of skinning, compared to the vast amount of first and third party skins on XP, and why it's such an incredible feat that this has been turned off here, as on a normal install, this would completely break Windows. I guess this does bring me on to whether you should use this as a main system install. The answer is maybe, but probably not. Firstly, this is based on an older build of Windows 10, and I don't believe that software updates work since they'll break the install, so in the long term this may not be the safest thing to install. 
Furthermore, some modern apps may not work if they rely on the desktop window manager or anything that has been removed from the base Windows 10. There are some driver incompatibilities here too, like how the volume bar doesn't work on my HP laptop because it only sees the non-existent SPDIF source. And most importantly, just like Windows XP, there is no UI scaling. By default, Windows will try its hardest to push you to use 125% scaling, which breaks the OS, and this happens with every display that you connect. This means that above 1080p, display elements will be pretty hard to read and completely unreadable at 4K, especially from a faraway distance. Regardless, I'm going to keep using Windows Experience on my HP laptop, despite running on 2008 hardware, because so much of the Windows 10 blow has been removed, it actually runs really smoothly, about as well as Windows 7 or Linux Mint did. So maybe for old computers, this would be a genuinely good choice. But for now, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you for the next one.